And that's Sarwar since the start of the Scottish Parliament. Labour's gone from government to the third party in Scotland. It's, it's quite a slide and now you say you're only fighting for second place. It's not much of a pitch, is it? Well, look, I'm being honest with people about the challenge that the Labour Party has faced over the last 20 years. We have seen a declining vote share from election to election. In the last few years, we haven't been good enough as a political party. I've been honest about that when I took over as leader. And three days before I became leader, we were at 14% in the opinion polls. Of course, I want us to get as high in the polls as we can do. It's for the people of Scotland ultimately to decide over the next two and a bit weeks of this campaign. But I'm determined to get the Labour Party back on the pitch, to be arguing about what the country should be arguing about around our national recovery and making sure that we come through this really, really tough year, the difficult year that all of us have probably ever faced in our lifetime and use the opportunity to build a stronger and fairer nation. Something that's been a mission for the Labour Party is to lift children out of poverty. About a quarter of a million children are living in poverty in Scotland right now. How soon can you tackle that? Well, look, it's a quarter of children uh, living in poverty across Scotland, but actually in some parts of Scotland, it's as high as one in two children. Um, the First Minister's own constituency, for example, one in two children uh, living in, in poverty, which is not acceptable. Um, I want us to eradicate child poverty by 2030. I think we have the powers in Scotland to start that huge progress straight away, and that's why I want us to, for example, immediately double the Scottish child payment from £10 uh, to £20. I want us to make sure we have a mass job retention scheme and job recruitment scheme across the country as part of our recovery plan, and then also invest in other parts of our economy and other parts of our public services so we can confront the scandal that is child poverty. Monica Lennon, during the Labour leadership, called for that Scottish child payment to be increased to £30. That could have lifted thousands more kids out of poverty. Are you just not being very ambitious there? Look, I, I, you've seen other political parties suggesting that we should double the Scottish child payment uh, by the end of the next parliament. You've seen... Uh, well, the all the parties seen, are now saying that. What I'm Scot asking you is, are you being ambitious well, enough? I, I, I'm the same as a child poverty action group who want us to immediately double uh, the child poverty payment. So I want us to double that. But alongside that, um, crucially, this is an important difference, is that I want us also to introduce a new disability payment because you are disproportionately more likely to live in poverty if you directly have a disability or someone in your house household has a disability and that's why I want a new disability payment so we can target that right. support to families with disabilities so we can help challenge child poverty. Well there's an interim target of cutting poverty for children by 18% by 23-24. Now the Joseph Rowntree Foundation say that that's uh, that you would have to at least double the Scottish Child Child Payment. That's what you're doing with all the other parties as well. So you're doing the least that you have to to meet no, that have, target. You have to at least double the Scottish Child so Payment. you're doing the least you have no, to do. No, but in terms of policy packages, that's the least we have to do. Other political parties are suggesting we do it over the course of the next parliament. I'm suggesting we should do it immediately so we can lift tens of thousands of children out of poverty. But then we've also got to recognise the link between poverty and other parts of our economy. So we know coming through this viral pandemic that we have a huge challenge facing us around the jobs crisis that could come if we choke off uh, supply to the economy too early. So I want to see us supporting businesses through the transition period. I want to make sure we don't have a cliff edge on furlough. There are 360,000 of our fellow citizens who are sitting on furlough right now, worried about if and when they'll have a job to go back to. How we get people back to work also will help us lift people out of poverty. But the Joseph Roundry Foundation also says that if you were to increase the child payment to £40 just now, you could actually get rid of 90% of child poverty. Why aren't you doing that? Why isn't that the big thing in your manifesto? Well, look, if a proposal comes forward in the next parliament to quadruple the Scottish child payment... Why are we, we making we'll, we'll that proposal it. in this election? Well, look, we, we have put forward a package of measures in this election campaign, which is around a recovery plan around jobs, a one point two billion. But you want to you, you say you could eradicate child poverty by 2030. They say you could eradicate it now by doing that. Yeah, well, look, we, we want to immediately double the Scottish child payment. We're happy to work and engage with the Joseph Rowntree Foundation. But well, you're not actually going to do well what it takes to eradicate it right now. Look, you could do that. You could achieve Labour's mission well, right I, now. I, I am pleased, Colin, that you are accepting, and I hope other people will accept, that we have the powers in Scotland to eradicate child poverty. That has been... But you're not for, willing to use them right been, now. That has been far too often a debate. But you're saying you're not willing to use them right now. No, I'm saying let's immediately double the Scottish child payment. If we can make more increases to the Scottish child payment, fantastic. I'll back any other party that comes forward with that proposal um, in the next parliament. But let's also, alongside that, invest in our economy, get people back to work, make sure we have new businesses, we have people back to work, well-paid work, 
so we can lift people out of poverty across the country. You also want to give shoppers £75 vouchers to spend in shops to try and help rebuild the, the high street. Is that, that, is that that's one of your big proposals? One of your Did, did, did you not get the, the, the Joanne Lament memo when she was a uh, leader saying that, you know, too much is free, you know, there's, 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 there's just too much of that? But look, it's, that, that's a really important policy, and I think it's important to look at the detail of that policy. But it's something so, for nothing, which is what no, she described. No, actually, it's a really, really important economic stimulus package for our economy. So what we're suggesting with that policy is to give every adult in Scotland a £75 prepaid card that they cannot use online and they have to use non-food retail. And the reason for that is that the high streets were facing a huge crisis even before the pandemic. And that has been sped up by the pandemic. People's culture and behaviour has changed. They're using more and more online platforms like Amazon. And that's meant high streets have been decimated across the country. I want us to make sure that we have businesses continue to grow businesses staying open, creating new businesses, creating new jobs, and that is encouraging people to get on the high street when it's safe yep. to do so, what? spend in the high street, change people's behaviour, and also create jobs in the economy. Which is important, but... It's a huge economic stimulus package. it would cost £340 million, roughly, another £90 million for your staycation scheme to give people an extra important. holiday night free. If you add that together, that's the cost of putting that Scottish child payment that we were talking about but, up to £40. But the, you but the could reason tackle, why... You could, instead of that you could tackle child poverty. Wouldn't that be a big thing to offer people in your manifesto? But Colin, I think it's important not to say that we have the choice around child poverty and the choice around unemployment going up. They are both connected. If we allow unemployment to exponentially rise due to the outcome of this pandemic and how we respond to the pandemic, that in itself will lift child poverty levels, not reduce child poverty, it will increase child poverty. We spent almost £7 billion over this pandemic on the furlough scheme. What we are suggesting in terms of our great Scottish education, which is about reinvigorating our tourism industry, making sure we have new jobs and making it go from strength to strength. What we are suggesting with the high streets... above tackling child no, no, poverty, which you could eradicate not all, now. Not at all, not at all, Colin. You could. Not at the all, Joseph Colin. Roundtree Foundation, no, whose no, figures you're using, no, would say they could. No, let, let, me, let me explain, Colin. Is if we do not do those policies, that's a, that's a £600 million package, which is a drop in the ocean compared to the £7 billion we have spent on furlough over the last year. That's going to help stop hundreds of thousands of people go unemployed. It's also partnered with our job retention scheme and job creation scheme, the largest job creation scheme in the history okay. of the Scottish Parliament, create 170,000 new jobs, as well as protecting the existing jobs in the economy. You that in itself will help reduce okay. child poverty and make sure we have an economy that works for people in this country. Do you consider yourself a socialist? Absolutely. And what kind of socialist would send their kids to a private school then? Look, I, I've accepted that's a fair criticism. It's a fair question. It's a fair criticism. It was a decision that we made, my wife and I made, what we thought was in the best interest of our children. But I think every parent that has looked in their children's eyes through this pandemic will recognise how challenging this pandemic has been for our children and young people. You can see it in their eyes. And that's why I want us to invest in an education comeback plan, which includes an individual assessment for every pupil across the country, not just an educational assessment, but a mental health assessment as well. I want us to back that up with a tutoring programme, one-on-one -on -one tutoring. But you're for buying all of that for your kids. No, look, what I'm saying is I want every child across the country to prosper, and that's why we're you're talking about... You're buying that privilege for yours, look, I want that advantage. Every, look, I want, as I've said, it's a fair criticism, it's a fair question, I don't shy away from it. It's a decision that we made that was my wife and I in the best interest of our children. But I want every child across the country to have opportunity, and that's why, as part of that comeback, we want a comeback pass, because I want us to use the summer months, the lockdown ending, the sunshine hopefully coming out at some point in Scotland for young people to rekindle their friendships, make okay. new friendships, support okay. their health and well-being, and hopefully get raring to go uh, after the school holidays it. so they're ready to go in their education. Here's a question Douglas Ross couldn't answer the other night. What's the democratic route to, uh, to, to independence, another independence referendum, if that's what the people of Scotland want? Look, I, I have been clear right from the outset that it's for the Scottish people to decide their own future. I don't, I don't dispute that. The argument but I'm how making... How do they decide that? How, how, how do they decide that without a referendum? Because you don't want to give them a look, referendum, do you? Look, I, I'm saying we can choose something different. So this, these aren't ordinary times. This isn't an ordinary election. This is a pandemic election when 10,000 of our fellow citizens have lost their so lives. You're saying that you're, 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 but you're saying they can't have a referendum. No, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. What I'm doing, Colin, is I'm being honest about what my view is. I am advocating the case I want to make in this election campaign. I'm trying to persuade people that we can choose something different, that we can focus so over you the next five so hang years. So hang on, let me just check then. Are you saying you wouldn't block a referendum in the next parliament? No, what, what I'm saying is I don't support a referendum. I don't support independence. I think the next but parliament should But if the people of Scotland vote recovery. for that, you wouldn't want to block Look, that. I'm a participant. You don't, you don't think Boris Johnson should Colin, block Colin, that? Colin, I'm 
a participant. I'm not a commentator. I'm a participant. I'm a participant in this election campaign. And as a participant, I want to persuade people across the country that we can do something different. But you don't, and, seem, and the to be, but you don't seem to be willing to allow important. Labour to participate in this debate, that's to take true. an actual stance. But that's not true. We have a stance. My policy is clear. The party's manifesto is clear. We so don't no support... Man, no we, no we referendum don't, in the next election, in the next parliament. We don't support independence. We don't support a referendum. And we think the next parliament has to be a COVID recovery parliament. But an important point, Colin. COVID didn't choose between yes, no, leave and remain. The aftermath is not going to choose between yes, no, leave and remain. And that's why what I'm not willing to do, I'm not willing to say I'm only going to focus on the half of the population that agree with me on the constitutional position. That's not acceptable. I want us to focus on everyone across our country so we can all work in the national interest to recover from COVID, come through this as a stronger and fairer nation and focus on the next five years on what should be our national recovery. The STUC at the Congress today backed a motion supporting, and I quote, the right to hold a referendum should lie with the Scottish Parliament as elected by its people. Do you agree with that? Look, what, there, there are some caveats within that that the STUC... So STUC is talking about a recovery plan of their own, which I absolutely support and agree. That should be our national focus. But this yeah, is they're, part of they're, it. They're so they're do, you, do you about, agree with that part of it? They're talking about if and when... Um, there is a referendum. There also have made caveats around what mandates a referendum. Um, there are different views within the trade union but movement. Are they as well. right in but, 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 but are they right in but, principle but that the Scottish Parliament should decide, look, and the people who elect the Scottish Parliament ultimately get that decision as look, well? Look, look, fundamentally, it's for the Scottish people to choose their own future. I accept that. Fundamentally, it's for the Scottish people to choose their own future. Of course, it is. But what this election so campaign could be a referendum but, in the next Parliament. But look, what I'm, what I'm saying is, I'm, I'm arguing for something different. I'm arguing I, for the but, next five years to focus on a COVID recovery. But that's not necessarily what the people want. If the people say they want, if the people I want to persuade people, Colin, I, absolutely, that, that's what elections you, you, are you've, about. You've got a couple of weeks left to do that, yeah, and I want to use those but, couple of weeks to persuade people absolutely. that we can choose something different. But if, as the polls suggest, the, the the majority of people vote for parties who back in, an independence referendum, do you accept that? Look, I or, might... or do you hide behind Boris Johnson saying no? No, look, I, what I'm saying, look, Boris Johnson is a disaster. Right? And he devolution is strong and right for the people of Scotland. Boris Johnson is a disaster. I would argue in many ways... Is he ways, a threat to the United Kingdom? Boris Johnson is the biggest threat of, to the United Kingdom. And actually, Douglas Ross used to agree with that and argue that himself. I'm not sure if he still agrees with himself eh, on that position now. But the, the reality is... We have a choice. So, we are, but, but why, why, why isn't Labour's choice not to offer more powers? Devo Max, for example, there are people in your own party suggesting look, that. Look, the SDUC look, say look, that as well. I'll come to, the, I'll come to the, the, that part about Devo Max in just a moment. But what I'm suggesting is what people are voting for is what they want their priorities to be for the next five years. If their priorities change, they get to vote for new priorities. I want to focus on what unites us as a country, not what divides us, because these aren't normal times. This isn't an ordinary election. But in terms of devolution, I do want greater devolution. If we are true to wanting to build a recovery that works for everyone, then that's a recovery that's got to be north, east, south, west. Devo Max. It's got to be urban, rural, coastal island. That means more power being devolved, yes, from Westminster to the nations what, what, and regions. What more powers? For example, around employment law, for example, around drugs deaths, we need so to... not Devo Max, right? Do, no, look, Devo Max can mean different things to different people. I want greater devolution across the UK, and that also crucially means devolution out from Holyrood into our local authorities as well, because if we are going to deliver a recovery that works for everyone, we've got to push power and resource out from our parliaments into the nations and regions, from the Holyrood to local communities, so we can grow the economy right across our country. You say you want to be the second party of, 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 of Scotland, the, the main opposition party, and, and to try and offer leadership, but isn't the only record that you hold in the Scottish Parliament in the last few years is just a record number of leaders? Well, look, I, I accept that the hardest job in British politics is being leader of the Scottish Labour Party. I accept that. We don't normally come with a good shelf life. I'm trying to change that. I've already been honest about the scale of the challenge facing the party and look this is a this is a process if i was coming on this program to you calling today and saying you know in two weeks time i'm going to be first minister you'd probably be asking to get to up for someone to see me on the way out and people <laughs> across, people at home would also probably think i wasn't being honest i'm being honest with people i want to take the labor party on a journey and i believe that we can over the course of the next five years grow from the position we were in to having a labor government and a labor first minister but i want to spend the next five you. years on that national recovery and that's our thanks for joining Thank us you, in Scotland tonight.